Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really awesome faceted ornament. I want to give a shout out to fellow French demonstrator Sonia Benedetti. She shared this project and she also made a beautiful wreath out of eight of these in a circular pattern. It's stunning. I'll be sure to link to her project, but Sonia, thank you so much for the inspiration. I decided to convert her measurements and change them up a little bit so I could create this out of an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. The finished dimensions, it's just about five inches tall, and it's just a really, really cool ornament. Now, the way I have my ornament is you can actually still open it. It's a great thing to fill with treats, um, or just to make quite a few to hang on a Christmas tree. This would be a really great gift for the holidays. So let me show you how easy this is to make. I'm gonna start with a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock that measures 10 and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And along the 10 and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at every one and a quarter inches. So one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and 10. I'm gonna rotate it clockwise and we're gonna score this at one and a quarter three and three quarters, and six and one quarter. Now I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise, going back to the 10 and a half inch side, and we're gonna be making some short score lines. So we're gonna make a score line at one and seven eighths, but stopping at that first horizontal score line. Next, four and three eighths, stopping at the score line, six and seven eighths, and nine and three eighths. Then I'm just gonna flip my cardstock, so we only have to remember those four measurements, and repeat the same thing. So one and seven eighths, four and three eighths, six and seven eighths, and nine and three eighths. Okay, like so. Let me show you a template. All right, now here's what the template looks like. Those short score lines, their purpose is to be a starting point for us to do these diagonal score lines. So I'm gonna come in, I've got my stylus from my Simply Scored, or you can use the stylus from the Take Your Pick tool. And I just got a ruler, and let me show you what I'm gonna do here on the template. So I'm gonna line up at the bottom of that short score line, and then on the diagonal, down to this intersection of score lines. And then we're gonna score. I'm gonna keep doing that all the way down, only where those short score lines are. We're gonna do it on the top section as well as the bottom section, so I would just rotate it and do the same thing. So what I like to do is place my stylus where I want the diagonal score line to start, so right at the base of that short score line, then bring my ruler to it and kind of pivot it into place, and then score. So I'm just gonna work my way all the way down the cardstock. Okay, now all those diagonal score lines are done. Let me show you the template again, okay? Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines that are straight, not the diagonal ones. Okay, now we're gonna start removing some pieces. I'm gonna leave the template out here. I'm gonna focus on this little half inch side here. We're gonna keep these two sections in the middle, but remove the corner rectangles. So I'm gonna come in and notch and then remove the corner rectangles. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up each of these vertical score lines, stopping at the first horizontal score line. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the other side, so let me do that. Okay, now that that is complete, let's turn it to the side here. We are gonna remove all the sections that have the score line right through the center of it. So take your time so you don't cut the wrong squares. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so I'm gonna just go ahead and take my time and just remove all the squares with the score line down the center. And then I'm gonna fold the ones I wanna keep out of the way so that I don't cut those. I'm just gonna keep working my way down. 
like that. Now we're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So keeping the ones without the score line and removing the ones with the score line. All right, so there we go. Now you'll notice that I have these little holes here on the template. Let's turn it this way so you can see it. Now I created a little template to help me punch holes in this top section. I just took a piece of thick Whisper White. I cut it to one and a quarter by one and a quarter and I scored it at five eighths of an inch in both directions. And then the little intersection of those two score lines is where I punched a hole using my eighth of an inch hole punch. Now this is retired from Stampin' Up! but it's a normal sized hole punch. So with that template, because I do plan to make a lot of these, I can then just hold that template over each of these squares and use that to punch my holes out. Like so, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is fold backwards on these diagonal score lines. I'm just gently doing it. It's kind of difficult to come in and burnish. So I'm just gonna kind of work my way, work that cardstock where we scored it on the diagonal, and that's just gonna help this ornament form when we start to put it together. Okay, next I've got eight pieces of the Night Before Christmas Designer Series paper. These measure one and one eighth inches by two and three eighths inches. And if you have a directional paper, you want it to be in portrait direction. And these are all gonna adhere to these long, kind of tall, skinny panels. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down with liquid glue. Okay, now you'll notice we have these triangular sections. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to cut those pieces. Now, this ornament doesn't need those, but it really does add a little pop of color if you have a coordinating designer series paper to go with these rectangular panels. Okay, so I've got another piece of the Night Before Christmas designer series paper cut to two and a quarter by four and a half. I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored again. This is gonna help us make some tick marks. So on the back side of the paper, I'm gonna make tick marks at one, two, three, and four. Then I'm gonna rotate it 180 and do the same thing. One, two, three, and four. Now hopefully you can see those tick marks and they're gonna be kind of adjacent to each other. So here's a little template I'm gonna show you. We made those tick marks at one, two, three, and four. Then we rotated it again at one, two, three, and four. So what we're gonna do is with the paper trimmer, I'm gonna come in and using this cutting groove, I am going to line up my tick marks on the diagonal. So we've got tick mark to tick mark, and I'm just gonna work my way down and cut this designer series paper. Now what I should have done was started from the corner of the designer series paper, so let's go ahead and do that. So this little piece is gonna be excess, okay? So we'll get rid of that. So that's our first triangle piece. Then I'm just gonna to continue to work my way down cutting on the diagonal from tick mark to tick mark. I like to just start one tick mark and then pivot the bottom one to get it into place. So really we have very little to no waste and we've maximized our little triangles like so. Don't worry, I'll have pictures of both templates on my detailed blog post. So let me bring this guy back and we're just gonna work our way and glue these little triangle pieces in place. Now the angle of the triangles is not exact, but don't even worry about that because that would just make that too complicated and I don't like complicated. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these triangles in place. All right, what do you say we put this adorable ornament together? I'm gonna to start with a piece of tear and tape adhesive and I'm gonna run that right along this little half inch strip, but I'm putting it right up to the score line instead of the edge of the cardstock. Then we'll peel off the backing using the take your pick tool. I'm gonna to flip this over. Now I'm gonna fold in the third score line from the left, the second score line from the right, and those should match right up where we want them to. Now the tabs with the holes, that's gonna be the top, so let's work on the bottom. I'm gonna pay attention to where my seam is. So this will be the second to last tab we glue down. All right, so I'm just gonna start with these two opposite tabs. So again, this is the back, 
This is the front. So we'll start with these guys and I'm just gonna put glue on one of them and then we're gonna overlap them and start to pull this together. Now what you can do is kind of come in with your fingers from either side here and liquid glue is your friend. You can slide things into place, but I am just totally overlapping those squares. All right, so then this is our back tab. I'm gonna do that one next. And then you start to fold in those score lines and slide that into place. So cool how these come together. Then we'll do the last tab on the bottom. All right, so the bottom is done. How cool does that look? Now for the top, I'm gonna grab a piece of the Cherry Cobbler Diagonal Stripe Ribbon. I'm gonna cut a 12 inch piece. Create a loop and tie a knot at the end. You can trim off any excess ribbon if you have it. Okay, again, we're gonna pay attention to where our back seam is. So this will be the second to last tab we stick down. So I'm gonna start on the two side tabs. I'm just gonna feed this ribbon through the back. Now there's a bit wider ribbon for these holes. So if you need to, you can take your stylus and push the ribbon through. We're just gonna kind of work in opposites here. Now what you can do before you close this up with the ribbon, fill it with your treats or your gift. Even some potpourri would be kind of nice in this. Just work your way around and as you pull that ribbon through, those squares are gonna overlap, okay? All right, so there is the ornament closed. Then from the Holly Jolly Christmas Bundle, I die cut the sentiment Love Santa with this cute little tag die. And we're just gonna feed that right onto the top of this box. And voila, there is our faceted ornament. I love how these turned out. You can certainly play with so many different types of designer series paper, even some with some foil, they would be really pretty. And then if you put eight of these together, you can create a really stunning wreath. So thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and pictures of the templates. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. I have options to subscribe to both my monthly newsletter as well as my daily blog updates, and I'd love to welcome you as a new subscriber. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle, and I'd love to welcome you to my team of Paper Pixies. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like a complimentary copy of one of our catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com catalogs. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made. So feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag PaperPixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.